let's start uh, with the second module the second module is all about timing arc now what is a timing arc so let's uh, try to understand like uh, what is the arc and uh, what is the significance of this particular uh, arc and what all arc i'm talking about so there are two type of timing arcs in general it is a net arc or the cell arc if uh, i will talk about the cell arc so cell is of uh, two type the combinational cell the sequential cell we will discuss about uh, the timing arcs in case of a macros or the custom blocks also you can understand the timing arc from like this example so this is a block or this is uh, this is the boundary and within this particular boundary some functioning is happening and that functioning may be a simple buffer it's a simple delay or maybe it's an inverter or maybe some ending is happening or maybe a complex circuit is inside this particular boundary and uh, something is happening here now as a end user as a user you don't know like what is the functioning inside this boundary what you will come to know like okay there are certain input pin and there are certain output pin so these are output pin so as a end user you know this particular part so if you remember in the college days uh, we usually talk about in terms of a function so the function in the sense if i will say like okay at this particular pin i will get a function f1 f2 f3 and f4 and i know like okay input is a, a b c d e and f and g also now in a college days we know like okay function f1 can be represent in terms of uh, the input and let's take an example like there is a f1 function f of a and b now this this function you you should know as a end user you should know like okay this is the function so if i will apply certain input at a and b what type of output i am going to get at f1 so this is a two input maybe there is a three or the four input and in this way you will get a function uh, the uh, f1 f2 f3 and f4 if you want to do certain analysis if i will ask you like okay from the logical point of view so logical point of view this much information is sufficient for you you don't need much information you don't need more than this because now you have a function related thing like okay this is the function but when it comes to the the timing that if i will apply a data at a how much time it will take to reach at f1 that particular information like okay from a to f1 and b to f1 how much time if i will talk about t how you will come to know function you know like okay from the logical point of view f1 is a Uh, some relationship of uh, at f1 whatever the output i will get there's a some relationship uh, with the a and b but in terms of a delay in terms of uh, the timing there is no such value so if as a engineer if as a designer if i want to know like okay how much time it will take for a input at a to reach at output pin f1 to know that particular information either i should know the internal circuitry of this red box or if i don't want to know the internal circuitry of the red box i will ask the person who designed or developed this red box and if i will ask the person who developed this red box so they will provide us the information in a very straight forward way they will not say like okay inside this there are and gate nand gate or there is a uh, this much of net is there the net length is there they will directly say like okay i have done the whole analysis and after doing the whole analysis i know like if you are going to apply a certain input at a it will take let us suppose 
टू नैनोसेकेंड टू रीच एट ए एफ वन पिन आई थिंक दिस मच इंफॉर्मेशन इज सफिशियंट फॉर यू एज ए स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू लाइक ओके आई नाउ आई नो द डिले इंफॉर्मेशन देन यू कैन आस्क यू कैन आस्क लाइक ओके आई नो द फंक्शन I know the function in terms of like if I will apply uh, one at a, zero at b, that what function I will get. But I need a individual information. I just want to test it. I I don't want to apply any input at the b because we are talking about the static timing analysis. So if you remember in the last uh, class uh, we have discussed about the dynamic. timing analysis and static timing analysis in a dynamic timing analysis i i mentioned like we are going to apply input at a and b each and every input and then we will see like okay how much time it will take to reach at the output so that's a part of a dynamic but in a static uh, we are not going to apply the inputs we will talk about in terms of the change at a so if there is a change at a let us suppose this change is 0 to 1 so i can ask the person who developed this red boundary like okay i need to understand like how much time it will take rising edge to reach from a to f1 or developer can say like okay because he know each and everything he can easily explain like okay for the rising edge it will take 2 nanosecond similarly for the falling edge it will take 2.5 nanosecond now why there is a difference between the rising and the falling is because we know like all the capacitance the charging and the discharging times are different so there is a possibility charging delay or the discharging delay are different that means uh, the overall delay if i will talk about this rising edge is passing from a to f uh, it is it will take some, some other time and the, for the falling it will take some other time and when we are going to discuss about the delay at that particular time we will discuss in detail like why the rising edge and the falling edge have a different delay now values now the second thing is you want to do certain analysis because the output f1 this f1 is going to connect to the some other block now you need to understand like okay if i am making a change at a in the sense 0 to 1 if i am making this particular change what type of change it is going to reflect at f1 so i need to understand the behavior of the change at f1 there are two points one is the response the type of response i will get at f1 and uh, how after how much time i will get that particular response these two information i need if i want to work with this red boundary from the timing uh, perspective you need information like if i will give the rising edge whether i will get a rising edge or i will get a falling edge or uh, there will be any change uh, or uh, there is no change at f1 so you need that particular information second information you need like uh, after how much time i will see that particular change at f1 so that means the delay between a and f1 pin these two information is going to provide by the developer to you they will provide the information in terms of combination a to f1 b to f1 similarly if there is a f2 f3 f4 so they will provide if a and b is a part of f3 f4 so they will also provide you like okay b to f2 how much time and what is the behavior maybe b to f3 so all these b to f3 a to f1 b to f1 what is this this is basically a arc so we are we are using that terminology like okay there is a arc between a and f1 and that arc has certain property one property is the response time and the second thing is the type of response so this is all about uh, the timing arc so what is a timing arc basically it is a concept between input and output pins and this timing arc has a information about the response like what type of response you will get at the output if there is a change in the input or the corresponding to the change in the input and after how much time you will get that particular response like our facebook page youtube channel for more such updates thank you for watching
बी एक्सपर्ट बाय एक्सपर्ट बेस्ट ऑफ लक